Hey everybody. everybody! Welcome back. Welcome. Uh, sorry we missed last week, but we were on a mental health break. Yeah. Yeah. Was we all a, need those. Yeah. We had a a nice week off. Yeah, a nice mini vacation, staycation. Yeah. Kind of vacation ish. Yeah. There was a beach involved, but yeah. Happy October. Yeah, it's October today. It's spooky month. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, we're recording this day of uh, upload, so yeah, we're it's it, is, it is officially October today. Yes. Uh, so that being said, October does mark um, our official month of spooky content. Yes, uh, we wanted to theme it a little bit more towards uh, the season, the season of Halloween. It's, I think, it's my favorite holiday in the season. I don't know if. You agree? It's definitely like a tie between Christmas mm. and Halloween for me. I don't like Christmas. I know. I just as a as a season. Yeah, I love Halloween. I just wish I was a kid so I could trick or treat again. Yeah, and, and think, not be weird. I think everything about autumn just makes makes it my favorite holiday. It's I definitely think, my favorite season. I think the weather is the best. I think all the views are the best. I prefer to look at leaves than snow any day. Yeah. Um, you're not uncomfortable any day. It's always like nice weather. It's a little windy. My allergies act up, but other than that. Mm, my allergies are bad all year. It doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> and it reminds me a lot of like childhood and mm -hmm. doing things that I like doing. Yeah. Um, like working hot and stuff. So mm -hmm. I think that has a lot to do with why I like the season as much as I do. Mm -hmm. But that being said, um, we both share a love for the season. Yes. So we wanted to celebrate with you. And ourselves, yes. Um, with uh, just four weeks of five weeks, five I think weeks, it's five weeks, five weeks of uh, themed content. Yeah, yeah. So this week we're going to uh, start off our spooky Halloween really a content by talking about um, the history of mm -hmm. Halloween, where it comes from, in case you don't know. Yeah, and then just some fun facts about Halloween. Yeah, just to get ourselves in the mood of. Uh, the season, you the know, spooks. learn some stuff that we may not have known before yeah. about the season itself. Yeah. Um, so why don't you uh, get started? Yeah. So tell us about. we have a couple of sources for this information. Our first uh, source is going to be on the history of Halloween, where it comes from in terms of its modern celebration. Mm -hmm. This information is from a History Channel um, article originally uploaded in 2009, but they update it every year with new information. Yeah. Um, so if you just Google History Channel Halloween 2020, you can find the article that we're using. I'll probably link them below yeah. as well. Um, so they have a little intro paragraph that I'll read, and then we'll go into the ancient history of Halloween. Okay. So Halloween is a holiday celebrated each year on October 31st, and Halloween 2020 will occur Saturday, October 31st. The tradition originated from ancient Celtic festival of Samhain. Samhain. Samhain when people would light bonfires and wear costumes to ward off ghosts. In the 8th century, Pope Gregory III designated November 1st as a time to honor all saints. Soon, All Saints Day incorporated some of the traditions of Samhain. The evening before uh, was known as All Hallows Eve and later Halloween. Over time, Halloween evolved into a day of activities like trick-or-treating, carving jack-o'-lanterns, festive gatherings, and donning costumes, and eating treats. Yum. Yeah. So, the ancient origins of Halloween covered on it a little bit in that last paragraph, but mm -hmm. Halloween's origins can date back to the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain. The Celts, who lived 2,000 years ago, wow. mostly in the area that is now Ireland and northern France, celebrated their new year on November 1st. This day marked the end of summer and the harvest and the beginning of the dark, cold winter, a time of the year that was often associated with human death. I think has to do with, like, you know, disease and mm -hmm. having a hard time surviving the cold. Mm -hmm. Celts believe that on the night before the new year, the boundary between the worlds of the living and the dead became blurred. Ooh -hoo. On the night of October 31st, they celebrated Samhain, uh, when it is believed that the ghosts of the dead can return to the earth. In addition to causing trouble and damaging crops, Celts thought that the presence of the otherworldly spirits made it easier for the Druids or Celtic priests to make predictions about the future. For a people entirely dependent on the volatile nature of the, the volatile natural world, these prophecies were an important source of comfort during the long, dark winter. Hmm. To commemorate the event, Druids built huge sacred bonfires where the people gathered to burn crops and animals as sacrifices to the Celtic deities. Hmm. During the celebration, the Celts wore costumes typically consisting of animal heads and skins 
and attempting to tell each other's fortunes. When the celebration was over, they relit their hearth fires, which they had extinguished earlier in the evening, from the sacred bonfire to help protect them during the coming winter. Uh, there's a little did you know it says one quarter of all the candy sold annually in the u.s is purchased for halloween that doesn't surprise me yeah it's a yeah. lot of candy it's absurd the amount of candy that's purchased mm-hmm. yeah uh by 43 a.d the roman empire had conquered a majority of the celtic territory in the course of the 400 years that they ruled the celtic lands two festivals of roman origin were combined with a traditional celtic celebration of Samhain. the first was feralia a sure. day in late October when the Romans traditionally commemorated the passing of the dead. The second day was honor Pomona, the Roman goddess of fruit and trees. The symbol of Pomona is an apple, and, and the incorporation of this celebration into the Samhain probably explains tradition of bobbing for apples that is practiced today on Halloween. Oh, so a combination, much like I think a lot of the Western uh, holidays, traditional holidays, there are a combination of yeah. ancient Celtic and um, some like native practices and they kind of come together in a mm-hmm. way so uh, the modern halloween is a kind of mishmash of those things yeah uh so you want to talk about all saints day yeah so all saints day um on may 13th 609 a.d pope how do you say his name boniface mm-hmm. is that the fourth mm-hmm. sorry i'm not good with roman numerals Dedicated the Pantheon in, Ro- in Rome to honor all of uh, the Christian martyrs, and the Catholic feast of All Martyrs Day was established in the Western Church. Pope Gregory III later expanded the festival to include all saints as well as the martyrs and moved the observance from May 13th to November 1st. Um, by the 9th century, the influence of Christianity had spread into the Celtic lands, where it gradually blended with the supp- supplanted, supplanted mm-hmm. older Celtic rites. In 1000 AD, the church made November 2nd All Souls Day, a day to honor the dead. It's widely believed today that the church was attempting to replace the Celtic Festival of the Dead with a related church-sanctioned holiday. Of course they did. All Souls Day was celebrated similarly to Samhain, with big bonfires, parades, and dressing up in the costumes as saints, angels, and devils. All Saints Day celebration was also called All Hallows or All Hollow Miss. Um... It's a term from Middle mm-hmm. English that's yep. derived from. Um, and the night before, the traditional night of Samhain in the Celtic religion began to be called All Hallows' Eve and eventually Halloween. Yeah. The spooks. And then Halloween coming to America. Uh, the, ex- the celebration was extremely limited in colonial New England because of the rigid Protestant belief systems there. Halloween was much more common in Maryland and the southern colonies. Mm-hmm. As the beliefs and customs of different European ethnic groups and the American Indians meshed, distinct, distinctly American version, a distinctly American version of Halloween began to emerge. Like I was saying, kind of a yeah. blending of all of them. Mm-hmm. First celebrations included play parties, which were public events held to celebrate the harvest. Neighbors would share stories of the dead, tell each other's fortunes, dance, and sing. Colonial Halloween festivities also featured the telling of ghost stories and mischief making of all kinds. By the middle of the 19th century, annual autumn festivities were common, but Halloween was not yet celebrated everywhere in the country. The second half of the 19th century, America was flooded with new immigrants. These new immigrants, especially the millions of Irish fleeing the Irish potato famine, helped popularize the celebration of Halloween nationally. Hmm. And then this next section talks about the history of trick-or-treating and where it comes from. So, barring from European traditions, Americans began to dress up in costumes and go to house to house, house to house, asking for food or money. Really? Give me all your money. I wish we did that. <laughs> um, a practice that eventually became today's trick or treat tradition. Young women believed that on Halloween they could de- could divine the name or appearance of their future husband by doing tricks with yarn, apple par- pairings, or mirrors. Interesting. Um, in the late 1800s, there was a movie in America to mold Halloween into a holiday more about community and neighborly get-togethers than about ghost pranks and witchcraft. At the turn of the century, Halloween parties for both children and adults became the most common way to celebrate the day. Parties focused on games, foods, and the season, and festive costumes. Parents were encouraged by newspapers and community leaders to take anything frightening or grotesque out of Halloween celebrations. How dare you! Because of these efforts, Halloween lost most of its superstitious and religious overtones by the beginning of the 20th century. Mm-hmm. 
of course they have to make everything boring <laughs> I don't think it's boring I think it's it's was a product of its time I know knowing how yeah. religiously controlled everything was yeah um trying to make everything kind of but what about as the conservative as possible it comes back yeah eventually yeah yeah yeah. So, so that's, that's a little bit about yeah. the history there. There's a couple more sections in that uh, article if you want to look at them and read through them yeah. yourself. Uh, I think there's some more interesting stuff concerning Halloween parties and uh, some more origins for modern Halloween as opposed mm-hmm. to the history. Yeah. And then uh, we wanted to talk about some interesting facts related to Halloween. So we have um, two articles that we're going to reference. And we'll link them down below if you want to look at them. Um, but which one are we starting with? Good housekeeping. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just some facts in here I thought were kind of cool. Um, like a little more information than the stuff that we talked about before, like trick-or-treating. Yeah. It says here, trick-or-treating has existed since medieval times, back then known as guising in Scotland and Ireland. Young people dressed up in costumes and asked for food or money in exchange for songs, poems, and other tricks. Today, the tradition has morphed into a children getting dressed up and asked for candy. Mm-hmm. Um, so they would dress up. I know the dress up kind of has a lot to do with um, like the warding off ghosts and mm-hmm. spirits. Um, but it's cool to see where the the phrase trick or treat came from. Yeah. Where you would uh, perform for those, perform tricks for the candy and stuff. It's kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um, those next two we already kind of talked about. Um, let's see. Oh, I think number three kind of goes a little more in depth, too. To oh, yeah. Okay. Sort of thing. Um, so, like the last article mentioned, some Halloween rituals used to um, involve finding a husband. So, during the 18th century, ladies would follow Halloween traditions that would help them find the romantic match. According to History.com, which we talked about, women would throw apple peels over their shoulder, hoping to see their future husband's initials, competitively bob for apples at parties because the winner would be the first to get married, and stand in a dark room with a candle in front of a mirror to look for their future husband's face. Thankfully, those traditions have died out. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the leftover stuff is still left. Yeah. Uh, like bobbing for apples. It's still apples. very popular in yeah. uh, today's Halloween celebrations. Yeah. Um, this one's kind of fun. Sugar rationing during World War II halted trick or treating. Oh, yeah. After rationing ended, the tradition grew into what we're familiar with today. Candy companies started launching advertising campaigns that capitalize on the ritual. Mm-hmm. So the next fact is now Halloween is the second largest commercial holiday in the country. And that actually kind of surprises me a little bit Mm -hmm. like i know obviously christmas is the first it says comes only after christmas consumers spent approximately nine billion dollars on halloween last year according to the national retail federation Mm. that's a lot of money Mm -hmm. nine billion dollars in just candy costumes and decorations uh, decorations probably i mean you see it every year there's more and more halloween stores there's more yeah halloween stuff there's it seems that there's more of a desire to capitalize on Mm -hmm. halloween nowadays than there was before yeah but i also feel like when i was a kid i saw like all the houses on my street were decorated Mm -hmm. and now i don't see that anymore yeah i don't think it's a lot of exterior decorations anymore i don't think i don't think the decorations really i think halloween as a season kind of relies more now on the idea of halloween Mm -hmm. like the parties and you know well i'm also wondering like when they say halloween do they count like autumn and fall decorations in that or is it just strictly? I, probably not i'm assuming it says because um it says spent on halloween and yeah when we're doing that i'm sure they're taking into consideration the differences between stuff but even still it's not you know decorate the outside of your house for fall and winter mm-hmm. for like fall um i think it's more branded things now i think that has a lot to do with it is yeah. i know back in the day you would buy you would buy costumes, or you would preferably, like, I had a couple costumes made as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, I was Dorothy, I think, like, four years in a row. I think that's what a lot of the money has to do, too, is you're having a lot of costumes that are probably more expensive, and they're licensed products. Like, everybody wants to be something that's out. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that was as popular when we were kids. I mean, I remember, like, there was, like, eight different Red Power Rangers yeah. Every year in your elementary school class. You know, yeah. it's just how it was. Power Rangers were big. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's 
decorations as much anymore as it is like things just yeah. things in general yeah and we talk about candy for trick-or-treating and stuff too yeah and some people make up the difference too because they take halloween really seriously and they'll do a lot of stuff that's true some neighborhoods too mm-hmm. i think we we live in a neighborhood that i don't really know if we'll see it all that much yeah probably not yeah okay um this fact uh do 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 that one's kind of just a reiteration of yeah so number eight on this list that we're linking below this year will be the first halloween in 19 years to have a full moon full moons on halloween are pretty rare the last time there was a full moon on october 31st was 2001 and before that it was 1955 the next one won't occur until 2039 wow yeah uh the 21st century apparently is only going to have six full moons on october 31st wow so that's out of 100 years only six times i guess that's just math but so (laughs) interesting to see (laughs) yeah um the irish also brought us jack-o'-lanterns i didn't know that Mm -hmm. um as the story goes an irish man named stingy or stingy jack i'm gonna say it's stingy tricked the devil and therefore was not allowed into heaven or hell so he spent his days roaming the earth carrying a lantern and went by jack of the lantern yeah and that's the short thing of O jack o lantern yes it's probably jack o the lantern at some point in the jack o lantern mm-hmm. from there this one i did hear before um jack-o-lanterns used to be carved out of turnips potatoes and beets instead mm-hmm. of pumpkins jack-o-lanterns originated in ireland after all once halloween became popular in america they used pumpkins instead i'm assuming pumpkins being more readily available here than Ireland. I don't know. That's an assumption. It could be wrong. Correct mm-hmm. me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Disney almost made Hocus Pocus a completely different movie. Mm-hmm. I love Hocus Pocus. It's one of those like classic Halloween movies. Mm-hmm. Um, the original title, Disney's Halloween House, that doesn't sound as good, also went along with a much darker and scarier script, according to IMDb. Another fun piece of Halloween movie trivia, Leonardo DiCaprio nearly played Max Dennison, but he turned it down to appear in What's Eating Gilbert Grape instead. Oh, makes sense. Yeah. Bigger movie. Mm-hmm. Mm. Candy corn was originally called Chicken Feed. Chicken Feed. Yeah. The company that sold uh, candy corn originally sold was boxes of rooster. Boxes with a rooster on the front in order to appeal to Americans' agricultural roots, hmm. according to National Geographic. The sugary recipe has gone largely unchanged since the 1880s. Wow. Candy I'd, corn, man. I'm not surprised by that. Mm-hmm. It is a very classic candy, and, you know, mm-hmm. it tastes how you remember whenever you have it. Yep. It's not like black licorice in that way, oh. where it's like it tastes exactly how you remember it tasting. If you're listening to this, are you a candy corn lover or a candy corn hater? Because I feel like there's no in between. Um, let's see. You didn't like the next one? Uh, Monster Mash once reigned the supreme on the Billboard charts. Oh. Yeah. Bobby Boris Pickett reached number one on the Hot 100 in 1962 just for Halloween and then recharted 11 years later in 1973. But this time in august <laughs> so i think maybe that's when you started seeing earlier halloween you know because now i feel like halloween is looked forward to earlier and earlier i know people complain mm-hmm. about christmas a lot how it like creeps in yeah but i feel like halloween is the same halloween's the same way the, the benefit that uh christmas has i think is you can't really get any earlier than november 1st mm-hmm. like you can't push christmas in the mainstream like you like we already see Christmas stuff up in stores, right? But you can't really push Christmas into October, no, because it's so strictly Halloween. Mm-hmm. Halloween doesn't have that; it's just summer and then Halloween. Yeah, so you can see Halloween kind of creeping into the summer of things, especially with Halloween being as warm as it was the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. I know it's actually somewhat cooler this year, mm-hmm. which is nice. Hopefully, it stays that way. I know. Um, the Michael Myers mask in Halloween has a fascinating backstory. Mm-hmm. I have not heard this. I have. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. The famous horror movie villain has surprisingly innocent roots. When shooting the original 1978 film, production designer Tommy Lee Wallace picked up two masks from a Hollywood Boulevard magic shop, a clown and William Shatner as Captain Kirk in Star Trek. Tony, sorry, Tommy came in with the clown mask on and went, ooh, that's kind of scary. Then he put on the Shatner mask and we stopped dead and said, it's perfect. Actor Nick Castle told the New York Times they spray painted it with white cut bigger eye holes and the rest is history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've heard of that before. It's a, yeah, it's a Captain Kirk mask. That's funny. Mm-hmm. Wow. 
New York City throws the biggest Halloween parade in the U.S. Doesn't Probably. New York City throw the biggest parades ever anywhere? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. That's not a fact on here. No, it's not. Look it up. <laughs> Uh, it draws more than 2 million spectators, includes thousands of participants, but started off as a simple idea from Greenwich Village. Hmm. Um, Ralph Lee, a resident and puppeteer, uh, would walk from house to house for his children and their friends. When the local theater got wind of it, they turned it into a bigger event, and it's gotten bigger and ev- bigger and bigger and more theatrical every year. Hmm. Interesting. Um, the most popular children's costumes are princesses and superheroes. That makes sense. No surprise. It makes me. sense not only because they appeal to children, but also because they're so heavily marketed. Yeah. Like, how many Captain Americas do you see? Yeah, every year. Mm-hmm. Even before Marvel was a big thing, I yeah. remember like even our childhood. I remember the X Men costumes. I remember like. I feel like. I s- maybe not. I don't know. Do you remember seeing like Batman's and stuff when mm-hmm. we were kids? Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. I had one year in elementary school, and there was like three Batmans in my class. Yeah. yeah. It's always a thing. This next one is very surprising to me if you want to read it. Skittles are the top Halloween candy? Yeah, that's, mm. that's shocking to Outranked, me. <laughs> outrank M&M, Snickers, and Reese's Cups. According to 11 years of sales data from CandyStore.com. Um, yeah. And even though candy corn also made the top 10, the tricolor treats also ranked among the worst <laughs> Halloween candies, according to the survey. That's why I asked if you're a lover or a hater. Yeah. I like it. I yeah. like candy corn. I like candy corn. I have nothing, there's nothing wrong with candy corn. I, I have nothing against candy corn. No. Like I said, it tastes how you remember it. Mm-hmm. I'm just, Skittles, really? Like, Skittles are good. I love Skittles. But I would imagine, I guess not everyone likes chocolate. Yeah. But everyone likes something sweet, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, not necessarily. I mean, when I say everyone, I don't really mean everyone. But... Yeah. Yeah. And some people have preferences. It's just interesting that Skittles is a, I don't even know if Skittles is a preference. I think it's more about what people buy to give out yeah that's true you don't buy your own candy for halloween right you buy candy to put in a bucket oh i feel like there's a lot of like skittles packs Mm -hmm. they have a lot of the little family packs and i think those are pretty popular yeah you're right um a city in canada banned teens over 16 from trick-or-treating hmm i mean whatever (laughs) i say if they want to trick-or-treat let them Mm -hmm. I get why it could be weird if you're over 16. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one, this is a little further down, but the night before Halloween is called Mischief Night or Goosey Night in some places. Goosey. I've heard of Mischief Night. I've Turn heard of Mischief 30th, Night, yeah. Popular pulling pranks, some harmless. Um, it really only happens in places on the East Coast and the Midwest as mm-hmm. the traditions never really made their way to the West Coast. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple other ones in that that article, but I think we can leave them up for people to kind of find if they want to but we do have yeah a second article to read through this one's from factretriever.com um written by karen lenhart she originally published it in 2016 but it's been updated since um and this is just 56 spooky halloween facts yes and some of them overlap with the last one yeah but... and we'll we'll try to skip over those yeah as we see them um like this one, the first jack o' were actually made from turnips. Yes. Yeah, we already knew that. We do. Um, Number four, if you want to read that one. Oh, yes. The word witch comes from the old English wicca, meaning wise women. In fact, Wiccan were mm-hmm. highly represented people at one time. And I'm pretty sure Wiccans are still like... Well, Wiccan as a word. Wiccan is a separate... Yes. Like, practice. Yeah. Yeah. But I, Wiccans are... I feel like I've seen like a, almost like a resurgence of... Yeah, I think in a sense. I think yeah. I think the the witchy aesthetic has gotten very popular, which mm-hmm. kind of uh, dilutes the idea of Wiccan and mm-hmm. witchcraft. But you have seen a, a rise in the aesthetic, at least. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, my opinion on all those aesthetic things is if somebody uses an aesthetic to find something new, mm-hmm. great. Yeah, great. They're not posers. Mm-hmm. I mean, you see this a lot in like skateboard culture too. Yeah. It's like people will call you like a poser because you wear skate clothes or play right. skate games, but you you can't you can't do tricks on a skateboard. It's like if they That's discovered they skateboarding through mm-hmm. Tony Hawk, fine. Who cares? If you discover witchcraft through TikTok, who cares? Like, great, right, you're learning something new. Mm-hmm. Like, well, and isn't a, like Wiccan? They're like really um, nature 
yeah. bound and yeah. like related to like yeah, the earth. Yeah, it's a lot. It's it's a lot to do with like druidism and stuff. It's not like There's you're like of... casting like spells on people necessarily. I mean, maybe, but it's just it's an old practice of you know honoring earthly mm-hmm. gods instead of like deified angelic gods, if you will. Right. Cool. Yeah. Fifty percent of kids prefer to receive chocolate candy for Halloween, so that's kind of what you were talking about before. So yes. it's about it's about split. Um, Twenty four percent who preferred not chocolate candy, and ten percent of children preferred to gum Ugh. for Halloween. My gum. That's why I like I was like Skittles because I thought like maybe Snickers or like Reese's. I know like not everyone could eat peanuts. Well, again, or peanut preferences butter, but... for what you want for Halloween at the top selling candy right. aren't necessarily correlated. I know that's true. I mean, you I've gotten dental floss for halloween before yeah it's not what i want but i think i've gotten an apple before um the guinness world record for the heaviest pumpkin is held by Matthias. i'm not gonna attempt to say his last name i'm gonna butcher it he's from belgium um and he has a 2624.6 pound pumpkin it's a big pumpkin that's ginormous the owl is a popular halloween image in medieval europe owls were thought to be witches and to hear an owl's call meant someone was about to die. Oh. Interesting. I wonder how that what that has to do with like the idea of ravens and crows being more symbols of death from yeah. owls. I wonder if those if it evolved from there, if it's a separate tradition entirely. I don't know. Interesting. I've always loved owls. Mm-hmm. Stephen Clark holds the record for the world's fastest pumpkin carving time, twenty four point three seconds, mm-hmm. smashing his previous record of fifty four point seven two seconds. That's insane. Yeah. And the rules are that the pumpkin must weigh less than 24 pounds and be carved in a traditional way, which requires at least ears, sorry, eyes, nose, ears, and a mouth. Hmm. Ears. Do you normally carve ears in a pumpkin? I don't normally carve ears, but it is rules of the competition. <laughs> it's weird. Souling is a medieval Christian precursor to, holiday, to modern day trick-or-treating on Hallowmas or November 1st, or Hollow, whatever the name of it, All Hallows. All Hallows, no. Eve is Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. I forget. We call it Hallow Miss. The poor would go door to door offering prayers for the dead in exchange for soul cakes. Soul cakes. Wow. Hmm. First known mention of trick or treating in print in North America occurred in 1927 in Blackie, Alberta, Canada. Hmm. Wow. But they're linked the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain. Uh, and later to witches, cats have a permanent place in Halloween folklore. Yes. During the ancient celebrations of Samhain, druids were said to throw cats into a fire, oh. often in wicker cages as part of divination proceedings. No. It's, you know, animal sacrifice. It's common in a lot of Asian cultures. Oh, I know. Black and orange are typically associated with Halloween. I think most of us know that. Mm-hmm. Orange is a symbol of strength and endurance, along with brown and gold. It stands for the harvest and autumn. Black Mm. is typically a symbol of death and darkness and acts as a reminder that Halloween once was a festival that marked the boundaries between life and death. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Mexico celebrates the Day of the Dead, or Dia de los Muertos, on the Christian holidays All Saints Day and All Souls Day instead of Halloween. Townspeople dress up like ghouls and parade down the street. What number was that? That was down at 25. Okay, sorry. You can read through it. If you find anything else you like, feel free. Mm, I'm looking, I'm looking. Just some of the stuff is things we've already yeah. spoke about. Ooh, the longest haunted house in the world is a factor, Factory of Terror in Canton, Ohio. Hmm, that's not too far. We should go. It's probably closed. I know. <laughs> After. This yeah. is all over. Famous magician Harry Houdini died October 31st, 1926. Wow, that's Harry spooky. Houdini was usually thought of on the spookier side of things because that was when magicians were still seen as kind of like, mm-hmm. ooh, scary. Let mm-hmm. me know. Yeah. That one's just morbid. Yeah, I, there are a couple in here that are <laughs> somewhat morbid. No. Yeah. Oh, in many countries, such as France and Australia, Halloween is seen as an unwanted and overly commercial American influence. Mm, I believe it. I do, too. I mean, even from Halloween that I remember as a kid to Halloween now, you can see yes. the difference, like how, how different Halloween is mm-hmm. um, from 
like like I said, the capitalizing on mm-hmm. movie culture and licensing, and then how many scary movies come out every year, and they're all just garbage. Mm-hmm. And uh, not to mention what Disney does with nostalgia every year with mm-hmm. uh, free forms. It's the same thing with Christmas and mm-hmm. Hallmark movies, and mm-hmm. how early the the stuff is out, and just mm-hmm. how much how many gifts you're supposed to buy for other people. Yep. Yeah. It's crazy, but yeah. I I also just like love Halloween. Yeah, I love the idea of Halloween. I think I like celebrating it, but we can celebrate that. I wind up celebrating more internally. I feel like yeah, like enjoying fall, mm-hmm. you know, the change of the season, and going and doing spooky stuff that we want to. And yeah, and we have yeah. like a a personal connection that we're going to talk about. Um, I don't think next week, but the week after about our time. Um being actors in a haunted attraction and what mm-hmm. that was like and stuff so mm-hmm. we just have a love for halloween but i do understand why other countries are like get away from me a child born on halloween is said to have the ability to talk to spirits hmm. well if anybody's born on halloween let us know if you can talk to spirits yeah that'd be interesting both Salem, Massachusetts, and Anoka, Minnesota are self-proclaimed Halloween capitals of the world. Wow. I think Salem makes sense. Yeah. You know, being witch trials and everything. This next one says, Boston, Massachusetts holds the record for the most jack-o'-lanterns lit at once. Mm. It's 30,128. It's a lot of jack-o'-lanterns. That is a lot. Pumpkins are classified as a fruit and not a vegetable. Mm. I knew that. Yes, I did too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Comedian John Evans once quipped, What do you get when you divide the circumference of a jack-o'-lantern by its diameter? The answer? Pumpkin pie. <laughs> because circumference divided by Lame. diameter is pie of a circle. In Alabama, it is illegal to dress up as a priest or a nun on mm. Halloween. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> The sounds of stabbing in the Halloween movie are made by a knife being plunged into a watermelon. Oh, lovely. Wow. <laughs> the average bag of candy that one child will collect on Halloween contains about 11,000 calories. Yeah, makes sense. Oh my god. I had some good Halloween bags when I was a kid. Yeah. Like some good bags. I would go, I would go in my neighborhood, because mm-hmm. at least where I lived, we didn't necessarily trick-or-treat on Halloween. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't know if that's just like an East Coast thing or just my area thing. No, we did the same thing. It was always the weekend closest. Yeah. Um, and then I would also go to like my cousin's neighborhood mm-hmm. and my other cousin's neighborhood. Mm-hmm. So I would get like three huge bags of I candy. would usually go once to one neighborhood, but the neighborhood we went to was was really it was there was a lot of um a lot of houses that were participating in trick or treat. So mm-hmm. it was really easy for us to get a lot of candy at any given time. Mm-hmm. Uh, this next and last fact is the original creator of Milk Duds wanted to make candies the candies into a perfect circle. When this proved impossible, he called them duds and then added the word milk to refer to the large amount of milk used to make the candy. <laughs> mm. Wow. I love Milk Duds. They just get stuck in my teeth so yeah, easily. Yeah, they're too chewy. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's a lot of a lot of facts. Yeah. Sure. There's, there's definitely more and I'm mm-hmm. sure like there are different stories about how yeah. things started or and we kind of just wanted to keep this first one lighthearted. we could have obviously found like scary facts yeah and, like you the know spooks. yeah like how many people died on halloween every year stuff like that <laughs> oh, but God. we kind of just wanted to get get ourselves more into the mood of the season than anything else and kind yeah. of it's been such a weird year yeah that we haven't really had a chance i mean we would have already done halloween stuff if things mm-hmm. were open you know and it's just so hard to it feels harder to get yourself in the mood for things when those things aren't available the way they always were yeah so, like, not being able to go out and do Halloween stuff. Yeah. You kind of have to. We're celebrating in different ways. Yeah. So we kind of have to put ourselves into the season. I think this was a good way to, you know, get that ball rolling. Yeah. If you will. Yeah. And like I said, we both really enjoy Halloween. And this whole month is going to be Halloween or spooky related podcasts. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we have more um, Halloween related content coming to you guys each week. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think there's, I think there's four more weeks if I'm not mistaken. Um, so we'll yeah. have a different, yep. there is. Mm-hmm. Okay. We'll have a different Halloween or spooky related podcast for you guys each week. Mm-hmm. And we're really excited cause it's our first like theming mm-hmm. really. And 
yeah it's a fun time for us yeah and as we're, as we're still trying to feel the like test the waters of the podcast it's good to get different topics out there and see what both interests us and our listeners the most yeah see what videos get the most hits what mm-hmm. the most interaction and, and what we like to talk about yeah and this is stuff we definitely enjoy because i think for the first like at least a couple months but i was saying like the year of this podcast we're really just going to kind of feel the waters on multiple topics and yeah. see what people like the most and go from there as much as we want to make the podcast about what we want to talk about we also want it to be interesting yeah and, and enjoyable yeah so talking about things that we're interested in is obviously a good way to start so really focusing on topics like halloween something we're interested in mm-hmm. and if you guys seem interested it might be fun for us to have that interaction more often mm-hmm. than we were originally planning so uh, yeah yeah i'm excited for the rest of the month mm-hmm. um and if you guys have any fun things that you're doing this month that you're like doing while you're in your house celebrating halloween let us know yeah let us know how you're celebrating halloween differently this year yeah what what did you guys do to make to put yourselves in the spirit and to like adjust for the circumstances we're in yeah obviously most places aren't gonna be trick-or-treating this year right most haunted houses aren't open yeah so what are we doing what is everybody doing to yeah. Uh, adjust for that in this weird strange halloween season yeah let us know leave a comment yeah uh follow us on our socials Mm -hmm. facebook twitter instagram yeah now that we're back from our little mini vacation we're going to be streaming on twitch again yep i'm going to start i'm going to put out a temporary tentative schedule yeah it's going to start next week um i will be streaming twice a day Mm -hmm. not every day i still have to pick the days Mm -hmm. um so probably three weekdays, it'll be during the day mm-hmm. and then in the evening and then weekends, um, probably in the evening for weekends as well. Yeah. And that's tentative. We'll have to see if that sticks, but yeah. that's what we're planning. So check out those links below. Let us know if you have anything you want us to talk about in the future. Yeah. And other than that, we'll see you next time. Yeah. See you guys next week. Bye. Bye.